Hey guys, this is International Master John Bartholomew again, and made my first video a couple hours ago, and uh, went and had some dinner, and decided to make another one here. So, I'm gonna play another five-minute game. Sorry about the audio on the last video. It was kind of, it actually did work all the way through, although it kind of got louder towards the end because I adjusted the settings. So I adjusted it again here, and I think this should be a little bit better. So just waiting to get paired at the moment. What can I talk about? Um, big events going on in the chess world. Upcoming Carlson versus Anand World Championship match. I think it's likely that Carlson will win that. <laughs> Not taking a very drastic stance on that. Okay, so paired against R. Penguin. I remember playing this guy a long time ago on ICC. I think I've been on ICC since about 99 or 2000. And I was really active for probably five or six years on there. And then when I went to college, I kind of um, reduced my activity a little bit. I play a lot of Slav setups as black, Slav and semi-Slav. So that's what I'm shooting for here. He didn't choose a particularly ambitious line with uh, bishop d3 on move five. So. Knight, knight c3 followed by knight h uh, knight h4 would be the more aggressive way to play that. Okay, so here I've got a choice of like where to put this dark square bishop. Um, could go to d6, of course. That's like the very natural looking square. b4 is also pretty good. I think I like b4 a little bit more. Um, just to try to frustrate his attempts to play e4 later. Only downside is he can chase me with a3. We'll see how this works. If he plays a3, I'll probably take and then play knight e4. Could also play bishop a5. Encourage him to go b4. It's also interesting. And he's probably angling to play e4. Although, no, he can't really do that because I take on c3. Somewhat tricky to find a plan for him here. I think he'll probably centralize a rook or play a3. Yeah. Let's go for this bishop a5 plan. Just want to try to make it a little tougher for him. Um, that's one thing I really like to do when playing against low rated players. And this goes for blitz or OTB chess. Um, if you're the higher rated player, you should always give your lower rated opponent more chances to go wrong. So rather than playing forcing moves like bishop takes c3, I want to play something a little more ambiguous. Make him burn clock time. Um, make him uh, make a tougher decision, really. Keep more tension. Okay. These type of positions can have a lot of shadow boxing going on. Um, just because the breaks that white typically plays for are pretty obvious, like here the e4 break or something on the queen side. But it can take a lot, long time to set that up. Okay, so knight e5. Probably just going to take and then play knight d7. Knight g4 is also interesting here. If I play knight g4, he can't play f4 to protect the pawn on e5 because e3 is hanging. So I kind of like that. But he'll probably play knight e2, I'm guessing. Protect it with his bishop. But then, like, I might be able to play, like, you know, bishop c7 or queen, well, probably bishop c7 to attack the pawn. It's not clear to me how he's going to defend it. Knight d7. Knight d7, he'll play f4, almost certainly. And then I could take and then put my knight on c5. Somehow it seems that knight g4 is just better, though. Yeah, let's try that. Don't think I'm running into any tactics or anything. 
I do have two loose pieces. You know, bishop on a5 and the knight. Always have to take account of loose pieces. Well, this, this capture shouldn't really help him. Take this way, just further attack this pawn. e4, okay. So now I can take on e5 and also threaten mate on h2. I think I'll probably do that. Because I think that'll force him to play g3. f4, okay. Yeah, now um, I think queen h5 or bishop b6 right away. Both good. I'm going to play queen h5. Just keep bishop b6 in reserve, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he's just losing material. Yeah, and he resigned. Okay, so fairly quick game here. Um, I wonder if this goes into examine mode. I guess I'll just go back here. I'd like to do a little post-game wrap-up on these whenever possible. So like I was saying, bishop d3, I mean, this move is um, not the most testing move in this position. Usually knight h, uh, usually knight c3 is played, and then after black goes e6, white plays knight h4. But bishop d3, I just decided to back it up. Um, in the past, I've, I've taken on d3 here. But again, this is like consistent with the theme of uh, trying to be a bit more ambiguous against the low-rated players. I think that's a good policy in general. So here I was debating between bishop d6 and bishop b4. Bishop b4 won out due to the control over e4. But, um, I mean, I don't think I ever had anything here other than equality. Certainly, black's not better in this position. But, like, right around here, he's got to find a plan. Maybe he should have just played a... Well, I mean, he did play a generic move coming up, like a3 and then rook a d1. But um, it's a little tricky to find a decent plan for white here. Because again, he can't really play e4, since I'll take on c3 and then take on e4. If he plays a3, I mean, he might want to follow up with b4 and then c5 and then b5 on the queen side, try to break through over there. Yeah, because as played, like this, this definitely did not work out well for him, knight e5. Yeah, I think, I think probably b4 is the way to play this position. Otherwise, I don't see a whole lot for white. b4, bishop c7, then maybe e4 or c5. Yeah, probably c5 since this pawn will be undefended. Yeah, because after he did this, I think black's doing well. I was anticipating knight e2, as I was saying. Then I think I would have played bishop c7, attack this pawn. Sorry, this is not an examine mode, by the way. Usually I'd be able to draw the arrows and such. I think I have a setting that can let me put this in examine mode. I'll have to do that for future videos. Yeah, take and then take. E4, and once I take on E5, this is a big threat. Um, I was saying G3 I thought was best for him. In that case, I think you know Black's got a number of good options. I could probably be even super greedy if I want, and after g3, play bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, queen takes e4. Um, just try to grab another pawn. Maybe he goes queen b2, though. I don't know. I probably would have played something like d4 and followed up with like c5 or something. But yeah, he did this, and that's just too loosening. Queen h5, and if he plays h3, I can check and then bring my knight to e3 win at least the exchange. Same thing if he plays g3 using the queen to defend h2. So, okay, pretty quick game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and have a good night or day, whichever it is for you.